China says their red eye AI has just reached no can defense territory. Let's talk about it. So the South China Morning Post is reporting that China's red eye AI just killed human pilots last hope to win in air combat, says the researchers, as we laugh in A9X at 60 Gs. So the one advantage combat pilots had over artificial intelligence was unpredictability. Now a new study has put that in jeopardy. A breakthrough set to reshape the future of air combat. Chinese researchers claim to have nullified humanity's final tactical advantage, the ability to outmaneuver algorithms through unpredictable, high-intensity aerial acrobatics. It's hard to take something seriously when they say acrobatics, but I digress. The Gracies would be proud. Detailed in a study published last year, the method combines advanced infrared imaging with AI-driven predictive modeling to anticipate an opponent's moves by detecting subtle wing and tail movements. It's a development that could render even the most agile fighter jets, such as the US-made F-15, virtually defenseless, according to a team of scientists for the Northwest Institute of Mechanical and Electrical Engineering. So the study addresses a critical flaw in existing AI air combat systems, their reliance on trajectory-based predictions, which struggle to account for sudden nonlinear maneuvers executed by human pilots. The Chinese team, led by Lin Zuohei, Zhu Zhu Bypass this limitation by focusing on the physical mechanics of enemy aircraft. They use a modified YOLO, because you only live once, V8 neural network. The system analyzes infrared imagery to detect millimeter-level deformations in opponent's control surfaces, such as the F-15s. 1.5, I'm glad they put that in non-commie units, 5-foot rudder or 6.5-foot elevator during the dogfight. Good luck with the fly-by-wire aircraft that are constantly moving in all kinds of directions. These real-time observations led to short-term memory network improved with attention-weighing mechanisms enabling the AI to predict maneuvers before they fully unfold. That's what it looks like. They can look at... I mean, it's an eagle jet. Uh, the, the, I mean, I could see that. I mean, the big honking surfaces. It's a big tennis court. They reduced targeting errors to under two meters, tenfold improvement over traditional prediction methods when applied to automated anti-aircraft systems. Such as preci such precision could allow shells to strike the cockpit. You know, DCS, where you hit the guy and uh, it looks like there's no damage, but you know, you're just flying along now. Human pilots rely on instinct and unpredictability. Hmm. Also, training tactics. But every physical maneuver has mechanical precursors, he wrote in his paper. By decoding these signs, a rudder tilt and elevator shift, the new model resolves the black box of human decision-making. Team tested their AI against some high-difficulty flight profiles mimicking real-world tactics. In one simulated combat, they released munitions at low altitude. Oh, hold on now. Not a pound for air to ground. That's not a C model. Yeah, they're not doing that safe escape maneuver. A maneuver requiring precise coordination of control surfaces. Eh. So a safe escape, escape maneuver is pretty easy to predict. I mean, that's not all that impressive. In another, the jet made rapid erratic jinking and diving to evade fire. Now that one, okay. Marked by violent control surface adjustments. Maybe they're over controlling. In both scenarios, AI reportedly anticipated trajectory shifts within milliseconds of detecting control surface movements, leaving no window for evasion. Breakthrough arrives amid a global AI arms race in aerial combat. In 2020, the U.S. Defense uh, Advanced Research Project Alpha Dogfight Trial shows AI superiority in scripted simulations. The AI took part in real-world dogfights in a test for the first time last year. We'll talk about them in a second. I got some news on that. Chinese stre team stress that their uh, system's role in fire control optimization rather than fully autonomous strikes. However, its principles align with global projects like the Loyal Wingman drones, which pair AI-driven craft with manned fighters. Study validates its approach using existing hardware, such as China's PS800 infrared sensor, which achieves the required 0.375 milliradian resolution at five mile distances. Yet challenges persist. They could employ countermeasures such as high powers lasers to blind or even destroy the camera. That would be tough to do. So there's that part. So good and bad, right? You could see like PDCs from like the expanse, right? You put little guns on bombers and stuff and they can track and shoot and you can't outmaneuver it gives you kind of a bubble of protection against missiles and drones and uh 
fighters, other fighters, cool tech, right? I can see that being useful. As far as BFM, I think the general public is too obsessed with dogfighting. And by that, I mean, they always think, well, if it's a, a jet, we don't have to say fighter jet, we can just say fighter. If it's a fighter, it only does BFM, like this is World War II dogfighting and stuff. That's such a small part of flying a fighter. Most of it is beyond visual range now. Even within visual range, most of it is infrared missiles, AIM-9X, Python, whatever. And these missiles pull 60 Gs or more. So they're highly maneuverable. And the best defense is not to get in that situation in the first place or have first shot opportunity so that you kill them before they even know you're there. Or you kill them before they can point your nose at you or before they can get their missile off the rail or whatever it is. So the dogfighting aspect, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, talking about the alpha dogfight trials. So in 2020, I did a video about this covering Heron Systems, their Falco AI winning the alpha dogfight trials. I even talked to him. We did an interview with him. And then we did our own gamer versus AI in which the gamer actually was able to win at least once. But it was tough. AI did some things that we're not used to because they're not living within the constraints that the human thinks of, like rear aspect shots, control zone, all that stuff. He was just taking shots, forward quarter, stuff that would be training rule violations in real life. So they were acquired by Shield AI, and that's now going into the Loyal Wingman, the NGAD, all that stuff. Um, so I thought it was cool that, you know, here's the update on those guys. But we did this, and it wasn't like a full scope. One starts at one end of the airspace, the other starts at the other, and we see who wins. It was a little different. So I can see a world where the AI is used for missile tech. You know, you can, if you can put that into a, a missile that can now maneuver at 60 to 90 Gs and predict where it's going. The problem is always going to be sensors, right? When you talk dogfighting, loyal wingman, all that stuff, yes, they're using the IR uh, spectrum, but it's going to lose it in the sun, right? You fly into the sun, now at, you know, the, the heat source. It's going to have harder time looking down because the ground is hotter. It's going to have its limitations, and it's probably going to have countermeasures that you can use, not lasering it. I mean, that's that's one thing, but you have to have a precision laser that can find that thing. The other piece to that is if it's fully autonomous, it has to have 360-degree vision because it has to, you know, if you're belly up, it has to still be able to see you to see what you're about to do because you're not, if you're doing lag BFM, which is what we do, we don't always point. It has to be able to know what you're doing with your aircraft without pointing directly at you. So there's going to be limitations with that of, of what it can see. Now, could I see a world where it augments existing systems? Absolutely. Is there a world where it's in self-defense systems for like, like say the B-21? You know, if you had the ability to use AI to use a small laser to shoot down and track other projectiles coming at you, that's a huge thing. If you had a B-52, remember the old uh, tail gunner? If you brought that back with, the, like I said, the PDC concept, you could shoot down missiles, drones, etc. So there's a lot of use in that, but the predictive nature of it, looking at control surfaces, I don't think matters. Because if you got a small missile, I mean, yeah, you'd have to have really high resolution to see the fins moving and stuff like that. Predictive algorithms are probably the future of it. Because uh, you're not always going to be able to tell. Like an F-16... Those flight control surfaces are always moving, and they're always moving independently of each other. An F-15 is different because it's hydraulic, and it's actually moving like a regular airplane. F-22 is going to be the same as an F-16, F-35. These fly-by-wires, dynamically unstable aircraft, do not handle like you think. Now, does that mean that they're not going to be able to get there? No. I mean, with enough research and development, sure, you can get there. But dogfighting is not what you need because there will always be countermeasures to blind the sensors so that they can't see, to jam the radars, to jam everything uh, that could possibly be used in targeting. The real threat is in missile tech and missile defense. And like they talked about, surface-to-air artillery, surface-to-air missiles, being able to shoot down drones, being able to shoot down cruise missiles, hypersonic missiles, stuff like that. So 
Is it as the article depicted? Hmm, not really. But is it a threat and an emerging threat? Yes. And the more AI becomes advanced and the more they figure out these problems and solve these problems, the more dangerous it's going to be. Uh, I just, the, the title about the last hope to win in air combat is stupid. It's nonsense. That is uh, just a small part of what air combat actually is. So let me know in the comments what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.